Hello, and welcome to some of my friends read comics. We've got Vince. Make mine murder. <laughs> We've got Chris. Uh, I don't have a funny thing. Just kill lots of people. Yeah, kill them all. And I'm Kia. Hi, welcome to the show. Uh, are you ready for the most carnage that is literally able to be had? Uh, provided to you by my friend Maxwell Carnage. Max Carnage. <laughs> it's happening. We're doing it. We're talking about it. It's the 25th anniversary of Maximum Carnage. The video game, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Last the comic year was the twenty yeah. fifth anniversary of the comic. Uh, yeah. So this comic was a, a Spider Man story that ran throughout, uh, like all the Spider Man books in nineteen ninety three. Uh, it's a fourteen parter, so we're splitting this into two episodes. We're doing ep- uh, eight, uh, parts one through seven today. Uh, we'll do uh, eight through fourteen the next time. Uh, also, of course, end of this episode, we're going to uh, continue with All Star Superman. Uh, we're on issue number seven, so stick around. We'll talk Which about that. Which is also that. a two parter. Yeah. Oh, it is also a two-parter. That's perfect. Perfect timing, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so so Maximum Carnage, I uh, I think, is probably more popular as a video game than as a comic. Is that accurate? I don't actually know. I never played or read either one. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Uh, what do you guys know about it? I, I knew it from the video game first and foremost. Um, this was an all-ages comic, but I didn't read much comics in 93, 94, but I definitely would rent, you know, games had spider-man in it and i was more actually interested in the spider-man tv show running from yeah. like what, 94 to 97 so i would yeah it. yeah i think it was a little after this uh it would have been like 95 maybe I, so it was 94 right 95 i mean i i definitely got into it in season two when he was turning spider into a spider blood yeah radioactive that's spider a, blood that's my um, that's but favorite. um from from a comic standpoint like i at least knew like or, or from a cartoon standpoint like black cats in this morbius is in this uh yeah Vans i got excited this. when morbius showed up I, I like that vampire dude so, so i recognized like a fair amount of characters because i had I, I, we've talked about this a few times i i won i guess the fourth part off a friend by playing pogs in fourth grade so i had, <laughs> I had that one issue um and so I recognized like about half the cast. So that was the one issue of Spider-Man I'd probably read. Like that might have been my first issue of Spider-Man other than Amazing Fantasy 15. Um, may have been my first issue of Spider-Man I ever read was Maximum Carnage Part 4. Um, but the video Wait a game, minute. Are you saying that your first Spider-Man comic ever was Amazing Fantasy 15? Yeah. That you personally read? You well, were like, I, I'm starting at the beginning no matter no, what. No, what happened was is um, my grandmother remarried. Um in the early 90s my grandfather died in the 80s um and she remarried it's and kind of heavy. I'm and sorry and her husband her, <laughs> her her new husband's son just gave he just gave me all of his books so i got like a lot of hardy boys and nancy drew books and like three investigators and you know all the kind of pulpy books but i also got this um stanley origins of marvel comics oh that's that, right yeah you've told me about this yeah okay. so um so I like read Fantastic Four, which I was like, this is bonkers, but this is fine. And like Hulk is boring. And then Spider-Man, like eight pages, like blew my mind. Like that one stuck with, I mean, it's the first time I'd read a Twilight Zone type story. Um, sure. Probably like seven or eight. Um, but I really liked um, Spider-Man then. And then flash forward to, well, I hadn't read anything else, but I had was familiar with the video game, which is just a straight up beat em up. And I played it. I rented it on Genesis or on Super Nintendo. My friend had it on Genesis. And you play as Spider-Man, but it is two-player. But you don't. The second player doesn't play as Venom. And then about like seven or eight later, levels deep, then you can play as Venom. But that's actually like the hard path. Um, yeah, then wait, who does the second player play as until then? I have no idea. I then, yeah, played. there is not a co-op two-player in oh. Maximum Carnage. I really? assumed it was more similar to like those uh, Avengers beat 'em ups and X-Men yeah. beat 'em ups. Those it's, like the superhero it beat 'em up. Be. Yeah, the superhero beat em up was a huge genre around that time. There's no yeah. co-op? No, not in the first one. That's in the so sequel, dumb. there is. Yeah, and Separation in Anxiety? Separation Anxiety, <laughs> uh, which is a, a retelling of, of, I think, partially the story we covered on this show, that Venom symbiote storyline. Lethal Protector, yeah. Yes. Um, I, it might be a combination of a couple of Venom storylines, but yeah, there's all, all his symbiote buddies or bosses in that one. That has co-op. Uh, but yeah, that game, I played it uh, when I would have been probably 10 or 11 years old. It was way too hard to beat without Game Genie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what I used yeah. to, to beat it. Uh, 
I could never get past. Um, there's a part where you get to the Fantastic Four, which is literally what two pages in this story. Uh, but no, they're, in they're the, not even that. They're like they're out of town. Yeah, but saying. they 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 get the weapon they need from the Fantastic Four in the comic. It or in the game, it is impossible to get past that point because mm-hmm. you have to fight a Fantastic Four robot that will kill you. Uh, but so I never got through that uh, without cheating. Uh, my Spider-Man story, I'm about the same age as Vince. Uh, I started reading Spider-Man uh, in 1994, so 25 years ago. Uh, but it was when the clone shows up um, during that storyline that happens about a year after this. So I did read these in back issues afterwards uh, because there were a bunch of them out because it was similar to Death of Superman in terms of they, they had a bunch of these for sale at every comic shop. Mm-hmm. And they were not hard to find, uh, so yeah, we'll we'll talk more about why that might be. As yeah, we go. yeah. Uh, yeah. But great. I mean, yeah, the, the video game was cool. I I liked it. I mean, you have a fair amount of different mini bosses between uh, Doppelganger and Shriek and Demo Goblin. Um, mm-hmm. I remember a level where you're like wall. Cl- you're basically like wall crawling up a level, so you're like climbing kind of like Frogger style up a building, and like Demo Goblin's there. And, you know, Cloak and Dagger, you know, are helping you out. It's, I mean, it it was, I mean, in, it a gets the job world, done. in a smaller world, like, you're seeing a lot of different Spider-Man characters, both heroes and villains, within a video, a yeah. Super Nintendo video game. So, like, yeah. it's it's totally yeah. fine. There's a and little bit are... too much uh, sort of stalling beat-em-up stuff where you're just fighting goons. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you're right, it does have, like, it follows the story pretty well, which you look at, like, other Spider-Man games... And, like, they're all just, you know, here's four or six villains, usually, because we're Return of the Sinister Six. Uh, And here they are in a a story that has nothing to do with anything you've ever seen. Right. Uh, Yeah, we should give, like, a quick gist of the story here before we get too deep into it. Uh, Basically, Carnage has escaped from prison. Uh, The symbiote is inside his blood now. Cletus Cassidy, the guy who is Carnage, it's, like, in his blood. So he can turn into Carnage whenever he wants. And he gets a little team of villains and starts killing everything. Uh, yeah. That's kind of the story, right? Yeah, well, you done. all right, we're done. Let's go on all that. <laughs> Let's go. No, I mean, anyway, like, final I mean, judgments. I mean, so I think before this, uh, so we obviously have Venom. He's the symbiote suit. Yeah, um, he's symbiote like the, suit he's came daddy, from daddy symbiote. He yeah. came from space. Spider-Man had him as the black suit. It was an alien. I guess it, I, we read this. It's Secret Wars. Yeah, we read it in Secret <laughs> yeah. Wars. Yeah. Um, but and then it, we read it in Amazing Spider-Man 300 as well. Right. Yeah. And so, but then it, the Venom symbiote kind of just spawned extra symbiotes, which we saw in Lethal Protector, but the most, the one that stuck the most was this one called Carnage and it hooked up with a serial killer played by Woody Harrelson um, <laughs> and the stinger yeah. and the stinger to Venom. Um, yeah. Woody Harrelson, by the way, is seventh build in the Venom movie, despite not appearing until <laughs> the stinger. Um, not uh, that movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny because when you think about it, like uh, Amazing Spider-Man 300 is, I think, 88 or 89. And like Venom immediately becomes like uh, the, the main like big bad of Spider-Man comics where like every year he comes back and it's like a huge deal uh, to the point that in 1992, uh, Carnage becomes the spinoff character where it's like, we want Venom to be an anti-hero who we can uh, have be the the main character in a comic. So he has to not be a, a killer anymore because uh, he's so popular. And so it's like, it's Venom's like fourth appearance or third appearance uh, when Carnage is debuted. And this is actually Carnage's second storyline. What, what wow. was it called? I, can't, I, I, I know I had friends and I borrowed the comics from. I cannot remember what the... He had a different arc probably a year earlier. Um, the first Carnage story you're saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was a multi-part arc as well. Um, yeah, it was, It was. I think, three parts. But yeah, it was when Carnage first shows up. It was 92. And then a year later, it's like, well, here he is. This is what you want, people. And so it becomes the Carnage show. Which I mean, the I remember. Show. I remember being like super excited. I mean, whenever we, I remember people talking about like the Venom uh, movie or Venom and the Tobey Maguire Spider Man three. It's like, well, obviously we're gonna get to Carnage, and even when the cartoon was happening, like I remember kids on the playground talking about like, well, Carnage is obviously coming. I think he shows up in season four of the Spider Man cartoon. He's hard to animate, obviously, because he's kind of more fluid. 
Um, so he's pretty lame in the cartoon, but and you can't really yeah. do him justice <laughs> to what his character is. But, yeah, you mm-hmm. can't do any of the things that Carnage does. He can't murder a poor old couple who's driving through Central Park at night. He can't murder 53 people, which would be like one of the largest mass killings in American history. Um, and then go down the street <laughs> and do it again like 10 different times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into more details. We'll get into more details. Uh, are we Are we ready to jump into this? Sure. I, I, oh, hey, let's mention our contest, by the way. Oh yeah, so we uh, we do uh, an over under uh, uh, to see. Now wait a minute. Okay, uh, every issue we do an over under to just kind of see how close we are to something. This time we did uh, how many references will there be to the lessons of Uncle Ben? Uh, yes. Did we decide? Are we doing just this episode or, no, or across all fourteen epi- issues? Okay, yeah. Okay. So um, we'll. What did we say? Uh, Vince said four. Akia uh-huh. said one, and Chris said eight. So this would be anything as like invoking the spirit of Uncle Ben or saying with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, yeah. We left it fairly open in that regard. So we'll we'll see how many times we uh, we heard it throughout this. Um, And before we jump too deep into the issues here, I want to start. I was reading a trade version that had an introduction by J.M. Demetrius. And uh, we had so much fun talking about the forward uh, in our last episode of the, uh, <laughs> the Weapon X issue. And I like this was the first thing I read. And I was like, really? Again? What are you doing, man? Uh, it was uh, sorry. I said introduction. It's an introduction of sorts by J.M. Demetrius. I'm not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> is it written in, wanna... is it written in 94? Is it written in 05 when the trade came out? Uh, ooh, that's a good question. No date. OK, I. They did have a trade that came out early, though. Okay. Yeah, I don't know which one this is. I mean, is. it had a tie-in video game. I would imagine this would be a big yeah. deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was looking for the date, and now I'm off the page. Hold on. Sorry, Kia. It's okay. It's okay. Here we go. I'm just going to read the first paragraph, and I'm probably going to do it in, like, a smarmier voice than I should. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you the truth, I didn't want to do it. When group, ed- when group editor Danny Fingeroth first proposed the idea that would mushroom into maximum carnage, I didn't even want to hear about it. Venom and Carnage may have wowed that amorphous entity called the comic book audience, but they'd left me flat. I explained to Danny that I liked my villains a little more layered, some moral ambiguity, some shades of gray, and that, frankly, I'd had my fill of the psychos and mass murderers running through the pages of half the comic books on the stands. And those, heaven help us, were the heroes... Peter Mm -hmm. Parker, on the other hand, was, is, and always will be a kind, decent, compassionate, caring human being. Something of a rarity in the comic book climate of the 90s. But, said Danny, after I detailed my objections, that's exactly the point. (laughs) Okay, so he had my attention. And that's, that's all I really need to read. I think that's enough. It's always uh, a good time when you have a foreword that says, like, this idea sounded stupid, but then I got <laughs> on board because like, it was my job. To... And then my boss said, no, really, you're doing this. <laughs> and uh, now, hold on, though. He talks about how much he hates all the violent stuff. That's pretty much all there is here, though. Like, I don't understand. Oh, what did, what which did... issue did DeMatteis write, though? He wrote... Um... He, he wrote, wrote Amazing Spider-Man, right? Or is he, that no, he, he wrote specu- Spectacular, um, according to my right. notes, um, which is the one where specifically, um, like, Spidey specifically comes around and is like, we have to save people, and Venom and everybody's like, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, like, the next issue, he, like, says, uh, that was dumb. I'm going to go back to Venom and hang out with him for a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're skipping ahead. But, yeah, that's pretty much all it is. It's just, like... We got Team Carnage and Team Venom, and then Spidey's just kind of flying around doing whatever he feels like. Um, you gotta love these these, these four words that like shit on the premise. Um, you really do. Yeah. I'm like, why would you write that, man? And just yeah. criticize all and throw all other comics under the bus. Like this one, yeah. I'm not like other girls. I'm different. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, this. You know, our Weapon X episode. You talked about stupid comics. Like this is a deeply stupid comic. <laughs> Oh, this is profoundly series, stupid. Series this is comics. written for nine-year-olds, yet shouldn't be written for nine-year-olds. Not yes. at all. I, I was just flipping through. There's an afterword. Uh, we'll read that next time. 
Okay, also, yeah, Mateus, yeah, that, also, that's for next Mateus. time. I mean, to be fair, like J.M. Day Mateus, I think, and it's been uh, it's been 15 years since I read Craven's Last Hunt, but I thought that Craven seemed nuanced at the time. So I guess sure. um, I haven't read it in 15 years, so yeah. I'll, uh, um, I'll defer to that. But Day Mateus, I can I can see that. I mean, he was the writer of what uh, JLI and Justice League International and some other things like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, so. the, the funny uh, Justice League that we did not enjoy that much, but yeah. it's it's, it's okay. definitely different different in tone than this. Yeah. Um, one thing that uh, definitely got stuck in my head is I know there's a green jelly theme to the video game uh, that mm-hmm. is notorious mm-hmm. because green jelly gets like a featuring credit in the video game even though i don't think most people are very familiar with that yeah, i just novel- know they're, they're not green day yeah this novelty band from the 80s that did like silly songs um but i definitely had the batman beyond theme stuck in my head as i was reading this because that is like a really like edge lordy uh theme where I was just like, yeah, this this all fits. Like, this is a very like new metal y, uh, even though it predates new metal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where... It fits in though, yeah, Edge Lord yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So what's going on in Spider Man's life around right now? Why is he such an Edge Lord? Um. Harry Osborn is dead. Yeah, he was just, the Green Goblin. Recently. Yeah, like probably last storyline, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Spe- yeah, Spectacular Spider-Man number 200, which we should probably do sometime. Yeah. Uh, so it would have been uh, literally the issue before this. Okay. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man 201 is the the next issue of Spectacular mm-hmm. Spider-Man. Oh, oh, and we didn't mention, like, we say this runs through all the Spider-Man comics. There were four running at the time, and they, they introduced the fifth. Yeah, they introduced Spider-Man Unlimited, which is where this all kicks off. Which we I also believe is quarterly. Through. Yes. That makes sense, because I don't think we see it come up again. It's, uh, a, it's a final it's part. So it's part 14. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Uh, we got Web of Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, and Spider-Man. Adjectiveless Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, Which was the with, t- Todd McFarlane book before Todd McFarlane left. Yeah, yeah. It's, for the first right, so, 15 issues or whatever. So uh, Harry has died. The funeral is happening. Um, but that, MJ blows my, is, that blows my mind, though, because, like, the the book that like really introduced me to Spider Man or the first one I ever got was um that I the arc I ever got was like the Web of Death, which I know we covered in our like lost episode or our, our uh right. pre pilot episode. And he talks about pe- like Harry's death, like it just happened, yet obviously was thirty issues earlier, because um, that's like three ninety seven and this is what, three sixty seven? Um but Harry's death must hang over this book for like three or four years. Well, yeah, it's only, like I said, 94 is a year away from this. So that's With, where the, the clone saga starts. Uh, that's only a year after Harry dies. Did they, ship, yeah, did they double ship issues? They did sometimes for Amazing. Yeah, because like I feel like Amazing is like, yeah, because like 397 doesn't feel like it's got to be three years away um, from this. In yeah, I'm, pre- yeah, I'm pretty really sure close. that they would double ship. I know they did before this. I don't know how long they kept doing mm-hmm. it, but they they would do. Uh, there's uh, the storylines that are like a like a two or a four part, and it would all just be an amazing because mm-hmm. that was the one that sold better than the rest. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, uh, Harry Osborn dead. Uh, Peter's parents alive? Question mark. Yeah, that's they've been weird like... to me, and that's also weird yeah. to me because they're in the first Spider-Man issue I read. So like I kind of thought they kind of always existed in like a weird way. <laughs> oh, if like if, that's, if this is your first um, Spider book, I'm like, oh yeah, well I guess his parents are alive. Okay, um, his parents. It's also it's weird because we barely ever see them. They're just like hanging out at Aunt May's house in the uh, like kitchen the whole time. I don't think they go anywhere else. If like if they're this on was the my street, they're on the, yeah, they're are on they? the streets okay. in issue six. I want. Yeah. Uh, but they mentioned that he was like a, they were stuck in a Russian prison for like 20 years because uh, they were spies or something. Um, I haven't read too much stuff about their parent about his parents. They, so th- that's actually a trick of the chameleon, if I remember from Web of Death. Mm-hmm. They mentioned that's that, that it's, a a, it's a chameleon trick, right? Right, and they retcon it into being uh, Harry uh, was behind it, even though he's dead now, which okay. doesn't make any sense. But that's what they did. <laughs> Great. Can't wait to get there. Um, and he looks, and well, his name not. is Richard Parker, but he looks, he, he's got the, like, the silver streak, like Reed Richards. So it's really confusing when Mark Bagley draws him. I, yeah. yeah. 
He does look a lot like uh, Peter Parker in Spider Girl, uh, where Peter is like a guy in his fifties oh, with a teenage yeah. daughter. I can see. Uh, that. But yeah, they're they're there. We're treating them like they're normal, <laughs> and uh, we're at the the funeral for Harry, and uh, he's like, "Geez, I hope uh, nobody puts together that uh, Green Goblin uh, knows Spider Man." Uh, but in the meantime, Carnage shows up in or escapes from Ravencroft and murders what twenty people? Uh, yeah, like everyone he can see, basically. Uh, he meets up with uh, some lady named Shriek, mm-hmm. uh, not Harley and, Quinn. <laughs> yeah, it's basically a very similar kind of relationship. It's uh, there are multiple times in this where I was like, yeah, this just feels exactly like it's taken out of a Joker story. At one really? point, he stops shriek from trying to kill spider-man uh almost exactly like joker would do with harley but, which is uh, funny because this is before that is it yeah, yeah. wow okay I guess then i guess true. harley stole it from shriek shriek is the original harley yeah Quinn. i'm sure pa- paul dini was reading maximum carnage like i can i, I, I need to steal this mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. he's like dir- voice directing arlene sorkin like hey read these comics about shriek <laughs> that does, this doesn't sound like Shriek at all, though. Um, <laughs> Do it in your accent. It'll be good. Um, there's there's not really much to her character. There's not really much to anybody's character, if I can be honest. Uh, she likes to kill. Yeah. And she's she been thinks in, I that think her boyfriend's one, girlfriend... She's been in, like, one Spider-Man story before. No, and she's is... a cloak and dagger villain. Yeah, well, they, they act like she's a... Like a cloak and dagger villain like they mentioned her like oh she's fought cloak and dagger before but i looked it up and like no she hadn't this was her first issue um no she, oh. she was in i think an issue of spectacular spider-man she's been in i think one other story ever yeah interesting yeah so, oh yeah my notes say the last issue was her first appearance but it definitely acts like she has a history with cloak and dagger but we'll get to that um, okay start okay. the freeform tv show that i've not seen <laughs> i have no, two seasons not gonna... of <laughs> Oh, we have a hoedown. <laughs> Who's that a hoedown? It was not my Di- hoedown. Diana <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> um. So, uh, what else happened? Oh, so they go on a little uh, a lovers rampage, uh, and uh, they meet up with the doppelganger. This is like a Spider-Man man spider. Uh, that's mm-hmm. like. Well, we met. Okay, so one, we met him in Infinity Wars, which we had read already before. I don't um, remember yeah. meeting him then, but okay. Well, the, the only reason I, I recognized him was like, oh shit, he's from that video game. Um, that I <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, I don't because every hero got like weird fucked up versions of themselves with big teeth. Do you remember right. like, it was, like a Captain America with big teeth? And oh yeah, and I remember Infinity okay. War, not Infinity Gauntlet. Um, but yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So so I knew him, and they even say this ain't your daddy's Spider Man, which <laughs> is like yeah. my, like my go to for making fun of the '90s because I remember mm-hmm. one of the f- issues I picked up. I didn't actually pick up. I literally just read it in, in a grocery store. Was uh, this ain't your daddy's Hobgoblin? Um, <laughs> which is I think after this. Um, so yeah, I don't actually I don't know about my time. I know I owned that Spider Man uh, Maximum Carnage issue for, but I read stuff in a grocery store. I would just my mom would take mm-hmm. me to the grocery store and I would just sit yeah. and, and read yeah. Wizard magazine, whatever magazines yeah. were open. And um, and children uh, back in those days, you could just uh, pick up a comic book at a drugstore or a grocery store, and they just sold them like yeah, the regular just, stuff. Your mom, you could be six or seven, and your mom would just like leave you. I mean, this is why people are afraid of pedophiles now. But I would just be <laughs> I would just be sitting alone in a grocery store by myself, just in a little corner, reading magazines, reading comic yeah, books. That's what I like, do. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. So uh, yeah, so uh, Carnage makes a new family. Uh, mm-hmm. They adopt doppelganger. As yeah, he's their... like a wild animal, so he is like a little pet. Yeah, yeah, as their like murder son. <laughs> I, this really yeah. screwed up. I don't like this. Like we just met and now we're playing house dynamic. Like it seems it's very it's, quick. It's very weird. Like we're the mommy and daddy, and we're gonna have mommy daddy time, and this is our baby, uh, <laughs> and we're gonna yeah. also adopt Dem- Demo Goblin, and he's also our baby. And like De- Demo Goblin's it's, a grown ass man. Like, yeah, <laughs> it is weird, but they're also supposed to be crazy. So yeah. you know, I don't know. To be fair, I like Demo Goblin better than all of the others because he's like, "Hey, Carnage, what about like my thing that I want to do?" And he's like, "Shut up, just murder these people." 
And so he kind of hates Carnage, but he's like, well, I guess. Yeah. Well, Demon <laughs> Goblin is also, like, very specific about, like, no, they need to have committed some sort of a sin because I, like, want to make people repent and, like, punish them for their crimes. And Carnage isn't like, just, like, just fucking kill. Relax, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's just like, that's not really what we're about, but yeah. you can join us if you yeah. want. <laughs> um, it's, it's a very, like, Manson family vibe where he's like, look, like, you're you're a separate serial killer, but we're not going to say no to you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if you want to join our, like, compound of crazy people. Uh, uh, you're welcome yeah. to do it, Ted Bundy. So, so we did skip ahead a little bit. We haven't actually met Demo Goblin yet no. here in the first issue. Uh, but uh, the only other thing that really happens that's worth mentioning, uh, Peter and MJ are having, uh, you know, a marital rift. Uh, P- uh, Peter wants to keep being Spider-Man, and MJ doesn't want him to. Pretty, uh, also pretty much smoking, and he's like, smoking, smoking is up. really uh-huh. bad for your health. And she, yeah. like, without a beat, is like, how about fucking going outside and getting <laughs> beat up every night and me not knowing because we don't have cell phones because it's the 90s. And I don't know if you're dead or not. Maybe that's more risky to my health. Maybe you're bringing home venom in our house. Maybe that'll kill me quicker than cigarettes. Also, yeah. I have blonde yeah, I- hair in one panel. Yeah, <laughs> I also like at one point she says maybe if Harry had taken up smoking instead of being the Green Goblin he'd be alive, yeah, uh, which true. I thought was pretty funny. Yep, uh, she's not smoking wrong. Is <laughs> safer she's than not. being a supervillain. <laughs> yeah, check out my director's cut of Spider Man Three where James Franco just starts smoking. <laughs> harm reduction. That's that's <laughs> we're yep. just going to reduce the amount of harm that you can do to yourself. Supervillain <laughs> is worse than smoking. <laughs> here first. <laughs> uh, the yeah. other thing that happens is uh, Carnage says, "Okay, uh, a Shriek and Doppelganger, I'm gonna go to some unfinished business. Y'all go hang out. They like fight Spidey or whatever." But Carnage goes after J. Jonah Jameson, who's shaking in his boots, and um, then we like never really hear anything about. Yeah, this what was the point of that scene? Yeah, <laughs> well, it, it's like, a great cover. Um, it is. Then, it is a great cover, and it's the it's the last part of the like uh, cutscenes in the video game because I remembered very distinctly the like animation of Carnage like sinking down on the desk, being very cool. But yeah, then it's not paid off at all in the next oh. issue. Um, yeah. So um, what happens? Uh, oh, you know, we do have an Uncle Ben counter in this issue, by the way. Don't forget that. Oh, we do. I missed it. Yeah, he definitely. I think it's in the fight with. With Mary Jane, he invokes Uncle Ben. Oh no! Oh, okay, okay, that's fair. That's one. One. All right, I missed it. Yeah, we were originally going to do Carnage's uh, every time he makes a weapon with his hands, but it would be at like a hundred. Yeah, yeah, that would have been a hard one. Also, I think Art that count. like our challenge could have been every time Peter quits, and then with and then the page count in which he decides to then be Spider Man again. Because <laughs> he quits being Spider-Man in this issue and is Spider-Man by the end of this issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't really quit, but he's like, sure, I'll take a two-week break. And then he's like, uh, actually, it, it'll be a two-minute break. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so um, second issue, Cloak and Dagger kind of come help him out after he's been in this fight with uh, uh, Mommy and Baby. This uh, is and- why I like Cloak and Dagger so much. <laughs> like, I always, like every time they show up like in either the ultimate universe or like in just random comics, like, I think they're in House of M. I'm like, hey, it's Cloak and Dagger because I remember them <laughs> from the video game and they excite me because of that. Um, That's cool. I the, didn't yeah. really didn't think anything was happening here. Yeah, so, see, that, like, that must be because like they're one of the first comics I read. So like I must have thought they were a bigger deal than they really were. Um, uh, uh, by the way, issue one, Spider-Man Unlimited was uh, done by Tom DeFalco and Ron Lim. Um, okay. Which we've done a lot of Ron Lim art stuff on. I think he actually did Infinity Wars with Demo Goblin, and now mm-hmm. we're in with Terry. At Kavanaugh. least some of it. We're doing Terry, Terry Cavanaugh and Alex Savuik. Savik. Yeah. Sa- uh, Saviak yeah. is what I was gonna say. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but Terry Cavanaugh. Uh, I'm sure he's a very nice person, but he's generally regarded as the worst Spider-Man writer of this yeah, era. Yeah, like this one really took a nosedive. Like, not that there was too much happening in the first issue but it was like interesting enough and there was stuff to follow and i was curious to see where it was headed but boy this second one is like it feels like a 70s comic like it feels very dated in a a strange way that i can't quite put my finger on everything is like very kind of basically told with kind of generic generic beats i don't know i don't know what i'm trying to say 
Yeah, it, holds, it feels very generic. And it doesn't hold together with literally the information we got last issue, which is like, how do you how do you not do that? Like your editor is telling you what happened. <laughs> I don't understand how you're like missing. Like J. Jonah Jameson is on the cover, but he basically disappears from the story in this issue. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Um, and then this is the part where Shriek uh, like sends a blast at Spider-Man. Uh, oh, yeah. Like uh Everyone shows up. Everybody's fighting. It's a nice classic uh, six man tag. We got uh, Team Team Carnage uh, with Mommy and Baby. We got Team Spidey with Cloak and Dagger. And uh, Shriek sends like this blast out towards Spider Man, and Dagger jumps in the way and takes the full hit and like disappears. And like they they think she's dead. I'm pretty sure she's not dead, but they think she's dead. Um, <laughs> and but here's the thing, Carnage gets so mad, and it's like, hey, I'm the one who's supposed to kill Spider-Man, not you. Let's fucking get out of here. I'm like, well, you're three on two now. You're winning. There's no reason for you to leave. Why Why are you getting out of here? Just kill Spider-Man. It's easier now. <laughs> so yeah. so now, looking at my writers, this, this will come up again in issue six, where literally there's <laughs> no reason for this fight to end other than the story was like, ah, eh, Carnage leaves. Yeah. Mm. That yeah. happens. I hate when that happens. It's oh. the same writer uh, uh. and you know, creative team. It's it's very strange and mm-hmm. not very good. Not very good at all. My um, only note though is it is cool that Carnage can make limbs out of just not his human limbs. Because like I think there's one point where he like makes another like arm come out of his chest or something, and I'm like, all right, that's pretty cool. Good job. Yeah, Carnage. I will yeah. I would say Alex Saviak or however you say his name. Pretty good artist. I, I like his. Yeah, uh, there's like the inking. The inking in this feels a little bit thicker, um, and it gives it a very different style as well. Uh, like, it kind of, it, I don't know. It's almost pulpy a little bit. I like it. Yeah, I, I enjoy his stuff. Um, it's it's similar to like Bagley, uh, but it's definitely different. Uh, where you're like, oh, I like both of these. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so, uh, oh, also after all this, Venom has been watching, uh, on the TV. Uh, oh, and, oh, actually, while, while they're all leaving for no reason, a dude in the shadows is also watching. Dude mm-hmm. in shadows, turns out to be, uh, Demogoblin, who we've, uh, we've been talking about. I don't know what uh, Demogoblin's deal is, by the way. I don't really know either. I had <laughs> never actually heard of this guy, but he's got a cool design. He's on a, instead of like a, uh, you know, Hobgoblin and Green Goblin have the little, Flying, what do you call that thing? Goblin glider. Yeah, the glider. Thank you, the goblin glider. Instead, Demogoblins is just made of fire. Like what? How do you do that, man? And That's he's cool. He's got like a Ghost Rider skeleton face. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. It's pretty cool design. I don't know his deal. Yeah, he's but got I like, like, like I don't know. They're not like fear bombs, but they're like despair bombs, right? Something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> despair. Like, yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, is, there's no getting out of this situation. No. <laughs> yeah, the the short the short version is uh, during a event in the eighties uh, called Inferno. Uh, Hobgoblin made a deal with a demon. Uh, it was an X Men crossover, but Spider Man was involved. Hobgoblin made a deal with a demon uh, where he became uh, literally a hobgoblin, you know, like a, like a monster. Uh, then in the in the nineties, he separated from him uh, as part of I think it was Acts of Vengeance, which gets referenced when Demogoblin Goblin is like, oh yeah, I ran into that Ghost Rider guy. Uh, so they get separated into two different entities, where the the Goblin, like the literal demon monster, is Demogoblin, Goblin, and Hop Goblin becomes his own guy again. Oh. So he's so, he's okay. literally a monster, uh, like from hell. This ain't okay. your daddy's hobgoblin. Not your daddy's hobgoblin. Oh man! Um, and, and looks like a Ghost Rider character because he was in a Ghost Rider comic before this. Okay, cool. I actually picked up on that. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, all right. So part three. Uh, Venom is at the airport now. He's just gotten back to New York, and he sees but like. How does Venom have the money to make this trip? Is what I want to know. You know, mm. he's he's working for the best YouTube channel. I don't know. <laughs> he works for hey, Chopper Trap West, House. Why you know. commit all those crimes? <laughs> uh, uh, basically, he's so, just yeah. The joke is that he's just doing a James Gale, uh Tom Hardy's just doing a James Gale movie mm-hmm. impression. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, is, Eddie has come to town. He's been chill the entire flight, but the, the whole s- time, the, the second he hits New York and sees a newspaper, he hulks out and becomes Venom. He's like, "Fuck this!" I'm like, "You knew this was coming, Eddie." Like. 
how are you so cool? And now you're yeah. having your tantrum. Um, and he just yeah. like breaks a window, flies out, and like you were doing fine. You could have just kept walking. It would have been okay. <laughs> but no. He's got a he's got a venom out and uh go crazy. Uh we get a little recap from Cloak and Spider Man. Cloak is mad because his partner's dead, so uh he's like, I gotta go brood for a little while. Yeah, and I do like Mark Bagley's art, but I should mention or Bagley, however you say his name. Uh this issue gets way hornier than the series has been to this point, including like recapping Dagger's death in like a very sexual image of her being killed. Yeah. And it's like right. this is this is getting weird, guys. Where yeah. it's like everyone's we, a little bit more posy. Everyone is uh yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, Shriek and Dagger especially. It's just like, guys, like this is getting way too horny for a comic that is mostly about killing people. Mm-hmm. It's, I just uh, want to you know, focus on my mass murder. I don't need to see no titties. <laughs> Sex and <laughs> violence, man. Sex and violence. That's the 90s. These are, um, all, these are all all-age comics, by the way, Chris, right? You said? Yeah. Yeah, there. I mean, there is no rating at the time, so like this is literally in grocery stores. You'd be like, "Oh, it's I'm, a Spider Man." I'm I'm fourth grade. I'm getting this off a of kid in Pogs for the next issue, at least. Um. <laughs> um. So at this point, I feel like things are going to start moving a little more quickly here because uh, it's a lot of fighting. Uh, the, the carnage uh, is killing people in uh, uh, Central Park now. Uh, Peter is getting into fights down in some other district with uh, Demo Goblin. And uh, Venom says, mm, I'll go to Carnage. And uh, they, like, he, he goes, finds them there, and then shows up all beaten up on Peter's doorstep later. Oh, Venom, what happened to you? No. Uh, yeah, I mean, this this book has established a, a very much a cadence of, like, like, one page of plot and then, like, seven or eight pages of a fight that just ends up basically being the same like for the last three issues and yeah. that's pretty much going to carry through this rest of this book yeah i kind of can't yeah. and, and really only a couple of the fights move the plot forward like i guess we learn that venom is beaten up but like how does he get to spider-man's house like carnage is right. like okay gotta go yeah we i beat you up to the point of near death now you're free to go ask for help uh, yeah, and like even the fights, I wish there was more interesting stuff to talk about, but there's no big set pieces or like, oh, I really liked it when this happened or that happened. It's like it's cool seeing Carnage and everything, and the art is always nice, but there's nothing in particular that really makes any individual fight or any individual moment super stand out. Yeah, and, it's yeah. Just and, and that's the thing is like even the video game doesn't really have like really epic boss fights. It's a lot of like, as Chris said, like killing time with like goon fights. Mm-hmm. Um, you're just fighting kind of like I mean they all have names like Final Fight style but yeah. you know it's like you're fighting Sandra and now you're fighting <laughs> you know Terry or some right. bullshit like that but like they have and little names and bars names, yeah. Yeah. Well, and just, you do you, fight like Demo Goblin like four or five times because yeah. it's just like well this guy's a good mini boss I guess but to set you up for fighting the real one I mean they do have great character designs I like all of the characters throughout this whole story it's mm-hmm. some of the more uh, like kind of horror ones that are uh, in the, the spider verse uh, so yeah. I, I appreciate seeing them I mean yeah. absolutely this would be fun if it was co-op um, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, mean, I had fun I had a fuck ton of fun in 94 playing this game like don't get me wrong I really did and it really should be like a four player game like the uh, X Men, you know, arcade game. Like I wanna yeah. play as Cloak and Dagger. Come on. That would be dope because um yeah. like we're, we're jumping ahead, but like it ends up being like you called it Team Venom Kia because it absolutely is. It's like Spider Man and a bunch of villains. Because it's Spider the the core team is Spider Man and then it ends up being Venom and Black, Black Hat and Morbius and uh yeah. and uh Cloak. Ends up being like the five person party. Which is, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. That would be a great four-player uh, arcade game. Yeah, right. and there's like yeah. an even team of villains. The villain team is uh, uh, you've got Carnage, you've got Shriek, you've got Doppelganger, you have Dima Goblin, and we haven't talked about this guy yet, Carrion. Uh, we'll get to him. Yeah. Um, one thing though, you know, as we're as we're getting into the story, I should say uh, he fights when he's fighting Dima Goblin. Like a priest shows up and like helps him. Oh yeah. Like uh, f- beat that guy, and uh, later uh, his dad has a, a conversation with him where he's like, you know, Aunt May, uh, uh, and I don't think we've had an Uncle Ben counter in these two issues, but in the next issue there is one. Yeah, that's where... my Uncle Ben number two is uh, mm-hmm, is in issue issue five, which I think we're skipping issue mm-hmm. four, but yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, where he's like, look, uh, Uncle Ben might have given you all these uh, platitudes about how nice people are, but look, where did it get him? Murdered. I, I <laughs> yeah. bet the motherfucker died thinking, like, how could I fix him? Um, like, uh, <laughs> Richard, like, that's <laughs> shitty to say about your brother until I remember you're the chameleon. Um, or something. Yeah, he's actually, he's, he's yeah. like a clone or a robot or whatever uh, programmed by the chameleon. <laughs> Yeah, Peter. Peter's dad is like pretty much instantly after Aunt May is trying to like literally talk about her her dead husband's lessons. Turns around and says, "Nah, that shit's wrong. I've lived with the fucking villains. You gotta go at them. You gotta kill them. You gotta be like them. You have to you have to be vicious and evil and don't let them destroy your soul, man. I don't want them to destroy your soul like they destroyed he, mine." He beats up a black man on the streets. When, he does. Yeah. It's and I'm like, nuts. <laughs> it's but. But yeah, like the the morality of this is so dumb because it's just like, you know, they're trying to get, set up this moral choice where he's obviously wrong. Like you can't like see what he does and be like, oh, yeah, I agree with that guy. But at the same time, it's like Carnage has murdered like so many people, yeah, you know, like, like how do you how do you be like, oh, I'm going to punch him out real good. I don't know about this venom, though. It's like, no, he's literally killing all of these people like you like have he's, to him. carnage has least literally mid- murdered hundreds of people in new york city hundreds of people and i'm Why like and there they're like more people after him like this well, is definitely like, avengers like, level well they're like yeah, the avengers are out of town and it's always out of fantastic town fantastic four are out of town <laughs> but and I, and I get it like from that perspective but it takes like six issues for there to be like we have a special wing of the nypd to help with this bullshit and i'm like y'all should have evoked that like after the first time he killed, and I think there's even a quote that they literally say, um, they call it a "some trouble, fifty dead" on the note on the news. Some trouble is literal. Some trouble. Yeah, that's insane. Like in the middle of New York, he's just murdering all these but people. Like if fifty people died in New York City. We would be talking about it five years later. Like absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it would be so, like, I and mean, we would be like re- remembering it fifteen years later. Like, hey, remember this this time that Carnage went crazy <laughs> in Central Park? Like, if, I mean, yeah, it's crazy that Spider Man is like, ah, gee, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if only, if only I could reach the Avengers, but I can't. So I, I don't know about working with Venom. It's like, are you out of your mind? It's but, so the, but then, like, as a, from like a writer standpoint, I'm like, what is your magic number that you don't invoke invoke like realism, but also like, yeah, it's okay. It's just small enough for Spider Man to handle. Like, I don't know what that magic number is. It's I not fifty. But no, yeah. <laughs> Hey, like I would say, uh, you know, because we did that Sin Eater thing, I would say it should be like under ten, like serial killer level, where it's like he killed a couple of people. Uh oh, like literally, this is too much for the cops. You know, that's Spider Man level, where it's like we called in Daredevil failure. Now to call in <laughs> Spider Man, mm-hmm. the next level up from that. You know, like yep. yep. Because um, a lot well, from that, you're calling like Shield. You've got like five stars in Grand Theft Auto, and you've well, got this, health carriers after you. And this was this was bizarre to me. Like I was curious to see what effect this was going to have on society. The only effect it seems to be having is that everyone else is starting to go crazier and viciouser. And they seem like just random people on the street who are like, hey, now I'm going to start carrying weapons and beating whoever I feel like beating. Ah." Yeah, Yeah, they start having like the L.A. riots in New York because a mass murderer is on the loose. That's the the wrongest justification that I can think of. Like, what? How does that lead to, to that? I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get it. But at the end of this issue, it, it gets to Spider-Man as well. Uh, what does he say? He says, I ain't your daddy Spider-Man. That's not what he says. What does he say? <laughs> uh, he does hold his fist over his head and he's just like, uh, what, you know, his, his Scarlet O'Hara moment. Yeah. Well, where he's like, as God is my witness, well, I'm going to. Yeah, people are inspired by Carnage like or just like behaving shittily. And Peter knocks a dude's tooth out. Teeth. Yeah, he punches him so hard his teeth fly out. And he he says, you want to act like devils? I'll treat you like devils. You'll get no mercy from Spider-Man. But then, like, pages later, he's like, I don't kill Venom. You're yeah. you're a bad guy. I just punched people's teeth out. Like, yeah. I'm leaving Team Venom. I'm going to be my own Team Spider-Man now. I'm yeah. going to be good. 
I, yeah. I do like that Black Hat, Black Hat joins him in, I think, part four. Yeah, part four, the uh, issue I yeah, did we kind of yeah, skipped it a we, little. We absolutely yeah. skipped that Nothing issue. worth talking yeah. about, though. And then, and then in part five, she's like, Spider-Man, like, what the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> like, literally, uh, we have to stop this serial killer. I don't care. Yeah. yeah like, relax. I mean, like, he's murdered, like, tons of people. And, like, I the thing also issue four, which we skipped over, like, Venom shows up in the house, and MJ's like, fuck this. Why is Venom in our home? Like, and to yeah. be fair, like, we read those issues. Like, he terrorized her in her own home. I can understand absolutely why MJ would be like, Peter, why are you friends with this dude? Like, <laughs> I'm GTFOing right now. I'll talk to you later after you sort your shit out. Because um, mm-hmm. she just leaves the home, like, right at an issue four. She's like, I'm done with you, Peter. Which is, like, a classic, I guess, MJ thing of, like, the writers wanting to get MJ and Peter broken up for, for decades. But... But yeah, yeah, but then in, in part six, she's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to a dance club. This is going <laughs> to turn out <laughs> you great. Know what? You know what? I met Good divorcees. They're like, fuck this guy. I'm just going to go out and I'm going to dance. I'm going to have a party. So, like, I mean, despite the fact that there's a mass murderer out there. Like, I can yeah, absolutely... Yeah, that, that's, the, like, the breakup part. I'm not saying she's wrong to go out and want to have fun. The part I'm saying is wrong is she knows that there's a mass murderer out there. Yeah, that's uh, what you well, do when you're mad at your husband, though. You go yeah. out to the nightclub and you just dance. And even people are like, what the fuck is this, like, drunk actress from Secret Hospital? Was that her soap? That's, <laughs> that's like, her show, yeah. Secret Hospital. Yep. Uh, yeah, and especially, it's just, like, you know, I'm visiting my aunt uh, in Queens and and asking her for advice. Now I'm going back to Manhattan to party. It's just like, no, just like go to like Brooklyn where there's not a serial killer. Well, I'm also mm. watching this and I'm, I'm reading this and I'm like, I wonder. And this is also by Terry Cavanaugh and Alex Savuk. We're in issue six now. And I'm like, I wonder if just like plot wise, Carnage is going to attack this nightclub. I bet he will. And mm-hmm. then like, <laughs> yep, of course. Um, also, Morbius joined the team somehow along this. Yeah. Uh, well, also, but so before uh, they attack, uh, there is a moment where Mary Jane thinks she sees Peter at the dance club and goes up to him and he turns around and it's not Peter. But it's drawn not different enough from Peter or like not different enough at all that I was very confused and I thought it was Peter. Did y'all like what no, was I it? No, I was like, I knew it wasn't Peter, but he's like, honey, I wish I was because we'd be banging yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> But he's like drawn exactly like Peter. Like, give the guy a mustache or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he just has a little mole on his face. Oh, and okay. So I didn't, like, all right. Yeah, and it's just like, I wish I was Peter because then we we could have some sex right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I skipped over my favorite note that I wrote down from part five, uh, which is a spooky man flies out of the sewers. <laughs> that was my yeah. that was my favorite note that I wrote. Yeah, that's, uh, that's we'll find out. Yeah. yeah, we'll learn more about spooky man later. Uh, so of course this nightclub is uh, is attacked. Yeah, um, it becomes the scene of the next fight, which, which again, I, it's not a fight; it's just a fight. Yeah. I, I Before kinda, that happens, uh, Morbius gets recruited to the team. They're like, "We like your style." He's a of, vampire, uh, by the way. People, these people. Yeah, vampire. Uh, what are you trying to say, Vince? He's a vampire. In case people don't know who Michael Morbius is, I know his movie's been optioned, but you know. <laughs> Wait, Michael Morbius? That's interesting. There's a joke there that I'm formulating. It, so so it's bullshit because, like, the thing is, is Morbius in my head is literally Peter's classmate who's kind of, like, weirdly jealous of Peter from the cartoon. Mm-hmm. And Eastern European accented, uh, you know, co- colleague from the yeah. cartoon. And I remember mm-hmm. reading, like, people, like, writing reviews of the cartoon and be like, Felicia Hardy knows Michael Morbius? Like, because I guess they never crossed paths in any of the comics up until this point, oddly yeah. enough. Um, yeah, this is literally the first time they've met. <laughs> but in the cartoons, they've dated. Um, and because they couldn't show, like, Michael Morbius, or uh, Morbius is, like, a, as, like, a vampire, like, sucking blood, he had, like, weird little, like, suckers oh, yeah, like on his hand. Oh, yeah, plasma sucking hand. He's like, yeah. I want oh, yeah, plasma. That was gross. I need the plasma. And he would have, like, his hands grabbing people because cartoon standards being what they were. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, I, Morbius was, like, a major character of the cartoon, so I know yeah. him, like, quite well. Um, <laughs> but they're optioning oh, his know. movie, and I I'll believe it when I see it. They're also making yeah. a Civil, Silver Sable movie, which I'll believe I, it when I see it. Um, so they say, Silver Sable in the new Spider-Man video game. First time I've seen her in, I think, any video game other than, like, a cameo. Yeah. 
Uh, I figured out a joke because uh, Morbius is a vampire. It's uh, the awful tooth with Michael Morbius. Oh, oh shit! That's all. Instead of Michael Michael Morbius, that's clever. Yeah. That's you, really babe. deep. That's really good. It's not that deep at all. We can keep moving on. No one uh, remembers Michael so, Moore's yeah. like weird little documentary series that ran two seasons on like fucking Bravo or whatever channel. Maybe an A and E. I don't know. I had it on DVD, but um. So uh, Venom and his team shows up to stop Carnage at the club. Venom actually saves Mary Jane and licks her face, which is yeah. Very but that's the bullshit because like the thing is, is like Mary Jane is so mad at Venom and like Peter bringing him home. Like this is obviously a plot point which you like dumbly develop where you're like you see Venom save people and then MJ's like maybe I was wrong about Venom, but that doesn't happen in this issue like at fucking all. Like he's like. Oh, you picked the wrong redhead to pick on Carnage, and then he like licks, he licks Mary Jane, and he's like, "Peter was nice to my ex girlfriend, so I'll be nice to you." And I'm like, "This is not the way to like win MJ over," um, <laughs> right? Which g- feeds into my idea that Terry Cavanaugh is not a good writer and doesn't understand <laughs> like, the, like the arc of how you're supposed to achieve things in this like I- editor driven story. This is such a minor quibble, but it stuck out to me in both of the Terry Cavanaugh issues, is that when people yell, they yell the dumbest things. More than often, I found people literally yelling, yell. Just the word yell. <laughs> I, uh, Venom is yells... Is like a peas and carrots situation? Yeah, but like Venom yells year at one point. Y-E-A-R, year. Like, that's not a yell. Like, <laughs> pick a good yell, man. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that Orson Welles bit. Uh, how do you how do you emphasize in? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's it's very dumb. I do think uh, they're at least resisting that urge. Should be like Venom's obviously right. They're they're at least m- making you be a little bit like, well, Venom's not like perfect. Clearly, like this guy's insane. Uh, so even when he's right, he's still an ass about it. So you're not mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm Team Venom all the way. Obviously, teen, teenage boys are anyway because he's the coolest. Edward. But this this book is missing a reason for us to not say no, Spider Man. Just go all out and stop Carnage. Why not? Like yeah. you need something in there that's like holding you back. Like some kind of like, oh, but Carnage. Uh, has a connection to such and such, and if he dies, then I don't know. Like I, I just Peter, need anything. Peter, Peter's dilemma in this is: should I become a murderer? But it's like told in the dumbest way possible. It's very yeah yeah. Ah oh, boy. Um, but, um, right, but, so- but but I, but back to this. Like there's um, Peter. You know, Carnage is at this nightclub, which I actually really like the coloring. Even I, I usually yeah, don't like yeah. like non detailed coloring. But, like, everybody is, like, gray-colored except for MJ, which I really like. Actually, I think mm-hmm. Alex Savioic's, um art is pretty good on, across the board on this. Mm-hmm. But so Peter sees Carnage on the news because um, I guess there's a news person there um, live, create, uh, you know, showing this mass murder. And then Peter goes, now that's what I call a sound bite as, like, P- like uh, Carnage like, <sighs> bites the camera. God. And I'm like, I'm like, okay – one peter from a character standpoint literally dozens of people are being murdered right now don't make a joke two mm-hmm. like who's reading of this and be like oh fucking spider-man he's so funny <laughs> like who from an audience standpoint is reading this and be like yep i love his I'll quippiness t- i'll tell you who it's terry cavanaugh you think i love <laughs> oh man yeah, this uh, these issues are, are definitely a low point, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> and then the uh, fight just ends. Spider Man shows yeah, up in the carnage, yeah. is like I am leaving. Yeah, yeah just, why? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, uh, happy hour is over. That's it wasn't. A, it wasn't a strategic retreat. Like he just left. Yeah, I don't know. Like we could analyze that forever, but. Uh, <laughs> We're not going to get any answers. And then Peter has to convince his own villain team, like, hey, this building's burning down. Maybe we should save some people. And they're like, yeah, we could change Carnage. Like, maybe we should trace Carnage. And they're like, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) And I do, I actually do appreciate that it's like a legit, like a whole villain team that he's having to like, like get into shape. Like, I like that idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, well, like, and not really villains, but yeah, they're definitely like you. They could be. 
Well, I mean, they all started as villains, sure shit. Right, exactly. Yeah, except for a Cloak. But definitely, like, uh, Black Cat and, and uh, Venom are on the other side. Like, uh-uh, no. We used to be villains. We know how this score is. Like, we need to punch Nazis. Like, that's how this yep. goes. Yep. Uh. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Spidey, like, joins the team again, uh, getting into issue seven here. And uh, they're trying to think, like, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to get let's rid of Carnage? To, let's go to Carnage's childhood home. <laughs> Uh, that will give exactly. us clues. Is that where they're at? Yeah, they go to his childhood home because fucking I don't know why. Because this is a, a plot driven thing. It's like, but I do love that he wrote Carnage Rules. Carnage rules. <laughs> yeah, that may be my panel of the week. Venom it's... rules. <laughs> Venom does drool actually. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it does. He does. He, he literally does. Uh, cool. But yeah, it does. It does show that Carnage was the kind of uh, sociopath that, as like a twelve-year-old, was like, "When I become a supervillain, I'm going to call myself Carnage." <laughs> yeah, it's good, yeah, good name for a guy like that. Uh, but they're trying to think, like, okay, how are we going to get rid of this uh, Carnage guy? And they finally decide, oh, I know. Literally every time I've had to defeat a symbiote before with a sonic gun. Uh, so who do we know that has one of those? Uh, they're all out of town. Uh, oh, Firestar has a sonic gun. Who? No, Firestar what? has firepower. The Fantastic Four have the sonic gun. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got that but, mixed up. But but even so, like I think that to the video game's credit, like let's focus a level around getting this rather than it being like perfunctory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like the plot um, of this is like let's just have Death Clock fill like half of this issue's page count. For right. no Death degree. Clock. Death Clock. I'm sorry. I. I I'm sorry, Metalocalypse is, is in my head. <laughs> we also, like, yeah, to get Firestar, it's basically Cloak says, okay, I'm going to go get her. You guys have a fight for this issue, and I'll be back at the end. <laughs> yeah. And he literally just grabs her from uh, their hideout, which, again, is not in Manhattan, so it's not like, you know, I don't know what the hell they're doing. You know, they're like, oh, that's not really our business. We're all the way, uh, we're under, I forget which bridge they're under, but they're like, we don't have to worry about this. <laughs> Yeah, like, we're going to go do other stuff. Yeah, uh, Speedball is too busy to stop these mass murders. Uh, Carrion uh, also joins the villain team. Carrion was the ghost that flew out of the sewers. Uh, he can touch people, and they die. And uh, maybe maybe one of my favorite moments of this uh, story is when Shriek says, Hey, wait a minute. Didn't this guy die? And then there's an editor's note citing the issue where he died. And then Carnage says, bah, who knows, who cares? Seems like a big old kid. fuck you to that editor. Yep. Yeah. Um, he's on the team, I guess. I do, Whatever. I do, like, I do like Carrion. I don't know why he's there. He doesn't really say much. Uh, but he I don't know why reminds Death me. Is as you either. That, it's, that's right. In the middle of it, there's an interlude, and it's like, okay, Deathlock out in space. <laughs> like, what? He's what? always on the internet. <laughs> he's on the internet and he says, ah, oh, there's stuff going down on Earth. I'm going to go down and help. Yeah, uh, I, I, I there's like... There's lots of he's... people are being murdered on Earth. <laughs> yeah, yep. w- while he's on the internet, he's just seeing, like, words uh, flash by, but I'm glad they censor those words so we don't see... In the middle of, like, seeing Carnage gruesomely murder all these people, I don't want to see the word murder or rape. Uh, you got to obscure that so that the the children reading it are like, what's that say? Oh, oh well. Well, also, this murder count has now gotten big enough to reach, like, intergalactic space. To where Deathlock is reading about it and well, says, let me come space. figure it out. What's that? Cyberspace, not intergalactic. Uh, okay, fair. But still, <laughs> where is everybody else? Why is <laughs> Deathlock the only one who's coming in to help? Yeah. Uh, it is an indictment of the Marvel Universe's superheroes that it's like, where is, you know, think of all the characters we've read, uh, their adventures of Luke Cage. Oh, uh, they would totally help. Yeah, we're about to see Iron Fist in the next part of that, so at least he doesn't, you know, he's accounted that's for. Something, that's something. Literally every Avenger, Namor, uh, you know, like there's there's tons of heroes that are all like, nah, this isn't really my business. Hawkeye and the West Coast group. Like, no, we can't get on a plane and head over to Manhattan. That's not really our business. <laughs> like, Alpha Flight? Anybody. 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 We've never read any Alpha Flight, have we? Maybe that'd not be something like to read at some like On Canada Day. On Canada Day. <laughs> um, that'd be good. Let me put that on the list. Canada Day yeah, is yeah, what, yeah. like, October 1st? Look, I don't know. Go to Canada if you want to find out. 
Okay, um, maybe Thanksgiving is around that time. It's that is good, too. It could be. Is that uh, not Canadian so yeah. Canada Day? Um, is there anything else to talk about? There's a fight. Peter's dad uh, beats that guy who was harassing Aunt May and just, like, whacks him over the head with a, with a two-by-four. Yeah. Um, Deathlock gets hung up to the Times Square billboard or the, you know, the automatic thing. Uh, another good sound effect here. Poont. <laughs> Um, there's a few I, I was paying a lot of attention to these sound effects throughout these issues after I noticed them um, that's uh, that's kind of it uh, they show up they, they get this uh, gun that Mr. Fantast- Fantastic designed they like break in that's why I got confused because they do get the gun but they uh, they get it from the Fantastic Four they just like break in and take it yeah, they uh, just uh, they just grab it and uh, Firestar, uh, I guess, meets Spider Man for the first time, which is kind of funny because you're like, oh, Spider Man and and Firestar must be friends since they were in that TV show. I thought they were amazing nope. friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nope, not friends. Uh, they have never worked together in the past. Uh, maybe they were in like one random issue of New Warriors, but I don't think she'd ever been in an issue of Spider Man before. So here she is. Hey, and now now that we have Firestar on the team. Oh, cliffhanger. What's going to happen in the second half of Maximum Carnage with Firestar see, see, from like on a, the team? From, like, a writing standpoint, though, like, those are, like, your struggle that you, like, commit a heist for. Like, that's where you, like, dedicate your issue to, like, we're going to get a heist and we're going to get this Yeah, done. not just, like, we walked in and grabbed it and we're, and we're done. No yeah. consequences. Like, like, I mean, it, it feels like 60s uh, Batman series where, like, we just have perfunctory fights. We literally have seven fights in this one 30-minute episode um, that don't mean anything. Like, make a heist. Make something, like, interesting like that you can dedicate, like, an issue or two to. Yeah, um, and, and, like, I feel like if you want to have Spider-Man deal with this moral event horizon, you know, like, have this be some kind of moral choice where it's like, oh, I have to break in and steal this. And then, like, oh, no, it's uh, the barrier to the negative zone is weakened because I did this or something like that where he can feel guilty about it later. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's like, oh, you know, see it the next issue of Fantastic Four to see what happens about this. Uh, But instead, it's just like, oh, we we got it. Don't worry. Uh, We left a note for Reed Richards so he knows, you know, like, why? Yep. Why? Why? Uh, good questions. Good questions all around. Yeah, I don't um, like this. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> yeah, maybe the second half will get uh, less fighty. It won't. Oh, it'll be more fighty. Uh, but uh, you know, we've we've committed. Uh, we'll see what happens. They're they're thankfully a pretty quick read. You can yeah. you know go through them because uh, because not much happens. Uh, so we'll, the, we'll the see good news happens. is the art is mostly good. Um, I I like three of the four artists. I don't really like. I, I, you know, I think I talked to Vince about this before. Uh, growing up, I always hated Spectacular Spider-Man's art because it's so different. And I, I don't hate it as much now, but I don't think it serves a story like this because there's sort of a house style. And then Spectacular Spider-Man is like, nah, we're not doing that. And so, yeah, we gotta- every- yeah everything is completely different looking in that issue. So Which like, one is the one where Aunt May looks like a monster? Oh yeah, there was a particular panel where, like, uh, she has, I think like, it weird was diamond her... like triangles over her eyebrows, and she has and like... her face looks long and like she looks like a demon. I think it was after Peter's dad was telling him the like his lesson of be an evil, vicious it's, bastard. I think, it's, I think it may have been the amazing artist. No, I don't no, know. It, Did Batman it draw it... anime weird? It would have been probably Saviak or uh, Sabusema. I, if I had to guess who it was. Because uh, that's spectacular in Web of Spider-Man. I'm looking for it. I'm going to let you know. That's definitely. I should have made a note of it because it's my panel of the uh, panel of the week for sure. Because it yeah, was so damn ridiculous. Because definitely, like Bill Sienkiewicz took over, which is like a very scratchy art style, which is really good for like Daredevil, but really weird when it's like part two of like a multi-part arc. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't match, you know, everything else that's going on at all. It's yeah. very strange looking. Oh, yeah, and there's like she's got like a weird. Uh, in the the first time we see her, um, she's serving tea to to Peter's parents, and she's got this look on her face, and it's like this is the voice I heard. Is she says, 
Peter used to eat two helpings of everything when he lived here. That's the voice I heard. Uh, it just looks... Yeah. Odd. Why would you say that? Yeah, it's um, it's it's Spectacular Spider-Man. It's where Peter meets with Aunt May, and she's like, maybe you can fool your friends, but you can't fool me. And then uh, uh, Richard shows up and is like, don't listen to her. Kill mm-hmm. people. That's that's where Kill she's really off. She looks literally like a skeleton. It's very strange. It's a very strange. Yeah, that last panel on that one page where, like, she's melting. <laughs> Boy, I don't know. Yeah. Poor on it is funny, like, you know, that the new Spider-Man movie has done the math and is like, look, if he's 16, like, why is his aunt 100? <laughs> Man, Marissa Tomei. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She should be, like, 25 years older than him or whatever. Like, I mean, she's, a an reasonable... older, she's an older aunt for him, but, like, she's still, like, 52. Yeah. To be, like, 50, yeah, means that it's the older sister, but she's not, like, 80. Yeah. Aunt Tomei. Yep. So, <laughs> I like Aunt May. I like Aunt Tomei. Marissa yeah, Tomei I think, is really good in that role. Yeah, I think she's great, and I think it makes a lot more sense yeah. than having her be like, oh, Peter. I mean, to be fair, like, he was probably written in a generation where, like, his his mom was probably, like, the 12th child, and Aunt May was the, the first child um, across yeah, 20 that's years. True. Like, that's true. It's possible. It's possible. How many aunts are there? Oh my god, we could do uh, a whole I mean, storyline like, about my, the aunts. My, my grandma yeah. was, I think, like the eighth of twelve or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This this is a great story arc, Vince. Uh, we're gonna pitch this to Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Legion of Aunts. Oh but they shit! All have, and they all have spider. Powers. This is like kind hearts and coronets, but with aunts that Peter could have stayed with. I love it. <laughs> That's a good oh one. Yeah. Kind hearts the and shot. coronets, by the way. For yeah, those and what who- if they're what if they're all healthy and Peter wouldn't have had to worry about obtaining medicine and could have lived a happy life? Oh, oh my god, this is more amazing. <laughs> so Kind Hearts and Coronets is a movie where this guy wants he he's uh he's twelfth in line to like get this inheritance, but he's got a there's like twelve people ahead of him and they're all awful fucking people and they're all played by Alec Guinness. Um yes. Obi Wan Kenobi. So like Old people, young people, children, and he murders yeah, all and, twelve of them <laughs> to get this inheritance. It's a really dark comedy from like nineteen fifty four. It's really great. It's got a Criterion movie, a Criterion I collection. Um, I don't think he murders all of them because I remember one of them was a sea captain whose ship just sank. Yeah, <laughs> but true. it's a so good one. Lucky. But the idea of Peter staying with twelve different aunts before he settled on Aunt May, I love it. Uh, I love yeah. it. Good stuff. <laughs> all played by um, Tomei. <laughs> uh, great. So we will uh, we will continue this story next time and see how uh, the uh, twelve aunts of Peter Parker fare. I mean, how Maximum Carnage plays out. Um, I, wish I don't like this though. I'm really disappointed. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm disappointed too. But uh, you know, we'll find a way to have fun with it and uh, make fun I mean, of how terrible it is. I will say it is a it is a fun enough light like very light read. Yeah, that it's like you're not gonna like you know break your brain over it. You can just kind of flip through the pages and be like, oh, that's kind of a cool picture. Uh, but yeah, most of it you're like, this is very dumb. Yeah. I mean, to its credit, it's like we can't sustain Carnage over fourteen issues. Let's mix up the villains. But um, so like I I and it's very video gamey and the video game like makes sense to me so i'm i'm on board with that concept it, it's very video gamey except for the fact that video games usually like you accomplish something every level there's not <laughs> even a, a princess is in another castle moment it's just all, all of the koopas just like get in their airship and leave at the end of every world and you're like come back i gotta fight you again yeah. you know there's no sense that you've done anything yeah. At the end of every issue, like That's it's true. very unsatisfying in that way. Well, mm-hmm. it also feels like I mean, like Part Six is uh, an amazing uh, Spider-Man issue, which is the flagship book, and I feel like it recap recaps like everything, like Part Six. And I don't know if that's because halfway through the story they want to recap things, or literally it's just the flagship book. Like we bet you didn't read the last three issues. We'll just yeah, recap everything for you. 
because yeah, like talking about stuff on and grocery store shelves, like amazing. If your if your store just has one or two, like they always have amazing. Like mm-hmm. that's the one. So like a uh, web of Spider Man might be hard to find, or Spider Man Unlimited might be hard to find, but amazing and spectacular are, and to a lesser extent, uh, just regular Spider Man. Like those are the two or three that you could usually count on, mm-hmm. um, and then the other two that like you you probably don't know, <laughs> or they just have like a, a lower count, like they get like five issues as opposed to 20 30 so yeah. I'm, I'm likely to see it when my mom goes to the grocery store mm-hmm. yeah so but that's uh amazing uh that's maximum carnage uh not not a great story um but i guess we'll see how it how it plays out we'll see yeah, if carnage keep reading does he win carnage, does everybody die have yep, carnage, carnage murders kills everybody. Every, everyone in the city of New York while Spider-Man's like, no. This is the series finale of all the Spider-Man books. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, I guess we should go on to All-Star Superman number seven, which is, again, we mentioned it's a two-parter. Uh, seven and eight uh, both have to deal with Bizarro Superman. Um, this uh, this felt like, I know, I know these issues feel a little plot light. Uh, this definitely felt the most plot light to me by far. Uh, the Bizarros are attacking from space. They're not, I don't know how much we know about the real Bizarros, like in the regular DC universe, but here they're like these kind of blank creatures that uh, will touch somebody and sort of uh, start turning into them. But also they kind of go a little crazy, right? Is that what's happening? Yeah, they're, 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 I don't know the classic Bizarro, like, so I'll, I'll yeah. say that right now. But I know there was a Seinfeld episode that questioned, like, how far is Bizarro opposite? Like, you know, like, my name is Vincent Goodwin. Would I be Vincent Bad Lose or just Bad Win? Um, mm, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? And, like, I, I have a hard time. Or would it be to Vince Riva? Oh, yeah, um, all back. Bad Win. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like that and Bizarro, I think is inconsistent, especially with like, I think this one, this book goes farther with the concept of Bizarro than that. But like they have a square planet as opposed to a spherical planet and they're, they're supposed to be the opposite. So like when Bizarro, I know Seinfeld has a ton of things like Elaine saying, like when he asks you, he wants you to have a good day. Does he say, I wish you had a bad day? Um, or does he say, I wish or does he say, I wish I had a bad day, but the I means you, because that's the opposite. Like, how far do you go in the languaging? And I, I feel like that's confusing with how Morrison writes this issue. Um, I didn't find myself worried about that. Uh, I'm I glad you went there, Vince. But I didn't it was... really. I mean, I was like, this is fine. But we got Leo Quinto. Yeah, like, there's, and we not got enough, the... yeah there's not enough bizarro dialogue here. I was just trying to figure out what was happening and what the plot was. Because uh, there's not much of it here. The Bizarros are attacking. <laughs> We've read seven of these issues now. <laughs> There's not much. <laughs> this one in particular was just super light. Uh, Superman is just kind of trying to save everybody and get the Bizarros away from everyone. And uh, what, like, really, I can just kind of skip to the end here. He goes to their planet because I did think the end moment was like, "What is this now?" I really liked it. Do you, like? Can we just spoil the last page? Zabaro? Yeah. the cliffhanger. Zabaro. <laughs> not, 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 not the Italian restaurant that's found in malls. Yeah, that, that, it's Zabaro. No, like, no it, he is at a mall. Then, <laughs> <and he's>, uh, <laughs> I've, I, like the, the, the cover bizarre, for issue bizarre? eight looks amazing. The, I didn't skip ahead to look at it. Let's see. Let's see. It's got Zabaro and a Bizarro tying Superman to a rocket, and I'm like, why are we not reading this issue right now? <laughs> that's get to it. I don't like we we've gone pretty long with this episode. I don't know if we want to like save time and just like, save it all for next time once we know yeah. more about. Bizarro like, wins. Not pro. much happens. I mean, uh, as we've said for all of All Star Superman, not much happens. Like the Bizarro is. I, I I had a hard time like gauging. Like, are they turning people into Bizarros? And Bizarro is like an opposite of yourself. Like, I'm sorry. Right. Um, um, I don't know how far our fans, our, our listeners know. Um, but basically, they're turning. You know, Bizarro is the opposite of Superman. So if he wishes you a good day, he means he wishes you a bad day. I- I think Bizarro's in the zeitgeist enough. We're good. So We're good. Um, yeah. But, I mean, but, there was a Seinfeld uh, storyline about this 20 yeah, years ago. It's, People it's know. Seinfeld's only been cl- over for 21 years. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, uh, there was one weird throwaway gag that I was like, oh, that's interesting, where one guy is sort of immune to their touch at the office, and he's acting like all big and macho about it. 
And uh, Superman's like, hey, you mind if I, like, uh, scan you, see what uh, it might be? And like, hmm, well, I can't uh, recommend those performance pills for everybody, but uh, I'll figure something else out, thanks. I was like, what? <laughs> That's, That's a weird, weird little joke, okay. So, uh, yeah, what, it, what, I don't know, I don't know. He's got, I don't know if I want those, the He's answer. got those dick pills um, that were always on Comedy Central, like, at one in the morning. With that guy that was so. smiling too much. But also, how did Superman rule that out without, like, comparing against other samples? Um, yeah, and also, like, why couldn't you give that stuff to everybody? <laughs> or, like, the active ingredient yeah, that is helping cause, to... Because Viagra was supposed to start to stop something else, and then it ended up being, like, a male... And, like, everybody got ended up getting boners as a result. Uh, it was, like, it was supposed to be, like, a cancer yeah, pill like, or something. It was, yeah, it was supposed like a blood to be thinner a bizarro or something. cure. Yeah. yeah. And he's so, like, yeah. like, I would just write that off-label or whatever... Um, doctors do um and that would be a great thing for the fda it was like it's all i mean it's for uh, making your dick bigger or stopping yourself from having bizarro symptoms like <laughs> yeah what does viagra do in the bizarro world that's what i want to know <laughs> this wasn't viagra though this was the, the the pills that made your dick bigger is what i applied from that it there was that dude that was like smiling exclusive. that was like a weird like tim burtony like edward sister hands like people smiling commercials do you remember those yeah. ones I don't remember yeah. what the pill was. Yeah, I remember. Uh, and it was like, oh, this is Bob, and he's a looks like a pervert. He looks yeah. like a pervert, yeah. and he's not. He's immune to bizarro pills. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> oh boy. Um, they, all, they all looked like uh, Soundgarden, uh, Black Hole Sun uh, extras. <laughs> yep, that's accurate. Oh, we do. We do one other thing that I guess might be important. I don't know. We learned that these bizarros uh, are hurt by the power of the sun. It's just like the opposite of Superman. So they can only attack when it's like night, which again makes sense. Opposite which then of I was Superman. like, oh, Superman's going to spin the earth and this is going to be awesome. But no, they were like, actually, it's because the bizarro planet's right next to us and it's fucking up our tides. Um, sure. Sure. All right. Well, um, it's fine. Hashtag it's fine. It's fine. We, get, yeah. we gotta wait and see what happens here. This was not the strongest issue. We'll get yeah. we'll get there. Uh, let's, uh, but, but Superman, why didn't you simply uh, fly to Marvel Earth and stop Carnage? That's what I want to know. <laughs> He's Superman. had interactions. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Better done. It. Uh, all right. I think we're done for this episode for the most part. You guys have anything else you want to mention? Uh, I'm good right now. I don't know what's going on with you, Strip and mine, though. So. Uh, we are uh, Blind Fury. I think I mentioned it last episode. It's still the next episode. It is coming out uh, in the near future. So check it out. Can't wait. Voice. Can't wait. Um, and uh, I finally watched Endgame after. Oh, yeah. It's out on video. Eight now. Years that it's been out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. Uh, I cried like a little nerd baby. I loved it. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, I think we're done. We'll see you next time. We're going to read. Uh, whoa. So sad what happened to Thanos. It is, isn't it? God. <laughs> Made oh me cry gosh. so much. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, next time we're going to finish off Maxwell Carnage. Uh, we are going to do All-Star Superman 8, finish off the Bizarros. And uh, yeah, for Vince and Chris and uh, myself, Kia, thank you so much for listening. We love you. We will uh, see you next time. Bye. Once you all not become no first comes bizarro. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs>